What up guys, welcome back to TV Time with Jay, and this time I'll be covering Lovecraft Country Season 1, Episode 5, A History of Violence. Now as per usual with my episode reviews, I will be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you have not seen this week's episode of Lovecraft Country Season 1, definitely, you know, go and watch the episode, you know, hop on your HBO Max or your HBO Now, borrow somebody's password, do what you gotta do, I ain't here to judge, but watch the episode, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below, because I will be going into spoiler territory, you have been warned. Okay, so, uh, now that we're, like, over halfway done with the season, um, I do want to, uh, kind of address, like, a pattern that I've, like, noticed that I really enjoy about uh, this show and this particular season. So we see that both Tick and Uncle George, rest in peace, uh, are huge literature buffs, right? I noticed that in each episode, a book is either shown or referenced, and that book is a direct parallel or that genre the book is in is a direct parallel to the type of adventure we have in the episode so in the pilot episode sundown uncle george quotes dracula and they fight these strange vampire like creatures that end up biting the sheriff and turning him into a monster as well so that's easy enough episode two we get the bylines of the Order of the Ancient Dawn, which describes the ritual that Tick participates in. Episode 3. Tick and Letitia are doing research on more of the Artem stuff and uh, magic, and so one of the things mentioned is spirits and exorcism. And we literally have to deal with an exorcism in that episode. Um, that was episode three. Oh, actually, actually, this is episode four, not five. My bad. Um, so episode four, we are dealing with the basically ultimatum that Christina had left Tick at the end of the last episode. You know, find Titus's pages for the Book of Names. That he kept hidden in the vault under the house. Right? That's the whole reason she had um, the house given to Letty. And so, now, we see, actually, in the library, when Tick is doing more research on Titus, that a kid in the library is reading Journey to the Center of the Earth. And in this episode, it has the vibe of a, like, pulp adventure novel. They explore the hidden tunnels, the caverns, um, they, they have to deal with booby traps. It has this very much ominous, suspenseful, Indiana Jones type feel. And I gotta tell you, I have a personal fear of falling. Not of heights. I have a fear of falling. And so, that whole balance beam shit, nah, I was, I was uncomfortable. I was, like, having to, like, calm myself down, like, breathe, breathe. You are not the one doing this. You are not the one doing this. They got it. They got it. And they managed to get it. And then this is where the title, A History of Violence, comes in. Because we actually end up meeting this um, Native American woman who Titus captured and enslaved and used as a translator to translate the language of Adam so that he would be able to, you know, do all his um, spellcraft and stuff. And, of course, when she realized the type of person he truly was, she refused to translate another word. And so to punish her, uh, he killed all her people and trapped her within this room of the vault. Uh, now Tick, uh, Letty, and Montrose are able to rescue her and also get out of the vault safely with the pages. And Tick is hoping to use her um, and to translate more of the pages so they can figure things out and, uh, you know, basically get a grasp of the language of Adam's magic so that they can use it to protect themselves against, you know, the other lodges, uh, Christina and her friend, that white dude, 
Um, and, you know, of course, whatever crazy male malevolent forces come after them. Now, Montrose, Montrose is like, nah, George told me to protect our family. This wizard shit, this wizard shit is going to cause us nothing but trouble. The deeper tick goes, the more we're going to have to deal with this BS. I got to nip this in the bud. So, George, you know, with his, you know, final dying wish, again, Montrose is motivated to protect his family. And so Montrose you know, does what he has to do, and he ends up murdering the woman so that Tick will not have a means to e more easily translate the language of Adam, which will, he's hoping, that will cause Tick to give up. But I think this will backfire on him because this will just motivate Tick even more to go harder on figuring out how to, uh, like, protect people using this magic. Now, we also see that the white dude is basically manipulating Letty's sister to like sort of be on their side and you can see it in the preview for the next episode that um, they are both trying to convince her that uh, they can help her out uh, now uh, Letty's sister seems to have a lot more sense right and um, you know she isn't just gonna be played that easily I have faith in her character uh, but it is going to be very tempting and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what means they use to try and tempt Lady Sister and corrupt her in that way. Also, you know, I gave Montrose some crap about, like, you know, obviously killing that poor woman. Even though I understand, like, in his mind he's doing what he needs to do to protect his family. But I really did like the bonding and um, father-son moments between... Tick and Montrose in this episode. Uh, what I really enjoy about this show, besides the obvious strong horror elements and like suspense thriller moments, is the fact that, you know, like any good piece of horror, the most important part is that you care about all the characters involved first. Otherwise, the scares don't impact you nearly as much as they should. And this show does a good job of having big moments of heart in between all that um i love how you know letty once again is just proving to be the mvp leticia fucking lewis for the win she not only is the one first one to cross the uh the beam to get to the vault room she's also the one to swim after the pages and uh retrieve them um obviously we see is that the elevator from last week's episode comes into play because uh, it turns out this vault leads directly down to that underground room where we saw the skeletons of those white dudes that tried to invade the house that the spirits killed. So that was pretty cool. So I, I like that everything's tying together. Again, I'm really interested to see what Christina and her friends move is and, uh, you know, exactly how Tick and his crew are going to counter, you know, their machinations as well. And just how deep this rabbit hole goes, I'm very interested to see. Uh, but overall, once again, Lovecraft Country continues to be fantastic. Extremely suspenseful, well-paced, well-acted. The music cues are amazing. You know, at first I thought, like, the inclusion of modern music, like, um, the Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money, um, I thought that might have been that thrown me off a little bit, but actually it worked pretty well. Um, I thought that was a very strong intro with Christina, and uh, it definitely like fit the vibe of her character. So, you know, once again, this mu the music for this show is on point. The set design, the effects, everything is just absolutely breathtaking. Once again, this proves to be one of the strongest new shows of the season. Uh, for this year in general, honestly. Uh, and I am continuously impressed each and every week. But uh, let me know your thoughts and feels about this episode in the comments down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Uh, what were your, some of your favorite parts? Did you like the whole Indiana Jones vibe? Uh, do you agree with me about the whole literature reference thing? Or am I just grasping at straws here? Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below as always. Don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, 
be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And in the outro card, I will leave linked my review of last week's episode of Lovecraft Country, which was Holy Ghost, episode 3. And then in the other link, I will have a video YouTube's Mysterious Algorithm thinks you might like, which I hope you do. And like I said, don't forget to click that this little circle in the middle to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and hit those notifications so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to, you know, just chill with me and uh, chat while I play video games, you can follow me over on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash MrJSkaldea. Link it in the description down below. Also, if you want to see my more weeby side, my anime channel is also linked down in the description. So definitely check that out. Also, if you want to keep up with me and live tweet shows with me and stuff like that, uh, the best way to do that is to follow me on Twitter. Uh, link is in the description down below. I promise that's the last time I'm going to say it, at least for this video. But until next time, that's it for me. I've been Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace.